So guys, let's meet the teams. These first guys came through the qualifier. Four matches on Thursday, two on Friday, two on Saturday. This is match number nine, and it's their first ever tournament together. First guy out of Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a fun guy to watch. He's a good guy off the court, and we are happy to have him right here on the AVP Tour. Let me hear it for the defender, the Kamer, Mr. Kame Shock. Yeah, that man is stoked. Got it. Woo! And his partner out of Salvador, Brazil, ladies and gentlemen. Now he calls Orlando, Florida his home. Ladies and gentlemen, he is now an American, and he is ready to make his name on the AVP Tour, just like he has all over the world. A 55-time FIVB winner, looking for his first AVP championship, a four-time Olympian and a three-time medalist. He is Ricardo Santos. Spike into the crowd, right to you. Perfect, just how she planned it. And their opponents from the United States of America, teaming up for the first time this year. And I think they're gonna be a team that might be together for a while. They're super fun to watch. The young gun with the veteran coming all the way through the winner's bracket undefeated to this point. This first young man out of Honolulu, Hawaii, and Long Beach State becoming a phenom around the world and here on the AVP. Give it up for the quick one in the back row. My goodness, he is Taylor Crab. And his partner, we've been watching for the last couple of decades, and I am stoked that he is still out here on the AVP Tour. He just keeps going and going and going. And we are so lucky to have him here in New York City, New York. Let this man feel it as he comes onto the court. Let me hear for the Olympian out of Bountiful Utah, Mr. Jake Spiker Jim. And we're back on Stadium Court here in New York City. The New York City Open 2017, first event of the Gold Series. I'm Triborn here with Rich Lamborn. We got a semifinal, the first semifinal for the men, and it's uh, we got three Olympians on the court and one young Hawaiian. Taylor Crab, the young Hawaiian that I actually grew up with over there in Honolulu, Hawaii, missing the first serve. Came Shulk, the Canadian Olympian back to serve. Good, 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 good. Oh, nice little finesse shot by Taylor Crab. Huge part of his game is just perfect arm swing and, and he has every shot in the game. He's only six feet playing against a block like Ricardo you'd think would be really difficult, but you'll see he can handle himself just fine with the, the old guys and the veterans. I'm fired up about this matchup. We saw two great women's semifinals, and I'm expecting the same from the men. This is certainly going to be a good one here. Ricardo and Kame, Canadian and Brazilian, coming out of the qualifiers, the 35 seed here in the semifinals. Jake Gibb in transition here. Nice push set to the pin. Came Schalks all over it. Another push set, Jake wants from Taylor. Oh, look at this rally. What a treat early in the match. Blocks, covers, more transition. Wow, these boys are working hard early. That's a lot of work to have to do for a side out. For <laughs> and when you, when you played four matches on Thursday, four more matches than, than a team like Jake and Taylor, uh, you're not... You're, not, you're hoping not to have too many of those if you're Ricardo Santos at 42 years old at like 230 pound blocker. Also one of the most skilled players and 
I think it's safe to say that he's, oh, smashes one off Jake Gibbs' head. But uh, Ricardo Santos is, was the best blocker in the world before Phil Dahlhauser came, came around. And then ever since then, they were going back and forth. Look at that one off Jake Gibbs' skull into the stands. That thing went four rows up. Taylor in transition out of the middle. Short push set. Came's all over, but can't handle it with that one-handed pokey. Staying aggressive, banging down the line. Nice wrist snap there for Taylor Crab. Again, Jake and Taylor having to work real hard for all these side outs. Yeah. You mentioned that Ricardo and Kane played a bunch of extra matches. But when you have three side outs and you've had to take 19 swings to get those three, that could start to wear on you if that trend continues. These are these boys are, are going to be feeling it early out here. No, 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 no. I think it's going to be a huge advantage knowing that that uh, Kame and Ricardo are coming out of the qualifier. What do you think? That looked like a touch. When I first I saw it. Tell. He definitely spatched it, but couldn't really tell there. Let's see if we can get a replay up, maybe. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Ricardo isn't just some guy from Brazil. He's one of the most decorated players in the history of our sport I here. I think you can't even argue that he's a top three blocker of all time in the history of beach volleyball out of Brazil, of course. The man has been to four Olympics, and he has a medal in... He has a bronze medal, a silver medal, and a gold medal. It's ridiculous just to make the Olympics. I tried to do it last year. And he's been to four and has medaled at three of them. And it's just, uh, I don't think anyone has a, a resume that can even come close to his. This is his second AVP, actually. He played in one back in 2009, I believe. Uh, but uh, this is his, I think this is going to be his best finish. And uh, it seems like he's playing really well in his first tournament with Kame Schalk. Go, go! You might be asking why is there a Canadian and a Brazilian on the American tour, but these two actually both have American passports uh, and dual citizenship, so it's it's fair game. And uh, the fans are definitely happy to see it because they've been putting on some great performances all weekend. Here's Ricardo Santos doing what he does best, unloading on balls. Just because of his size, he's capable of that, and he does it just enough to keep you honest as a blocker, but he can slice and dice with the best of them out there as well. Exactly. I mean, you look at all the most elite athletes in the world, and they have that physical advantage, right? But but the great ones are the ones that can have that touch and that finesse and that the brains and all that on top of the physical gifts that they're born with, and Ricardo is the epitome of that for beach volleyball. Then there's Jake Gibb, who's just a Hall of Famer on the American side. He's been to two Olympics, oh, sorry, three Olympics himself. Uh, he went to two with Sean Rosenthal and one with Casey Patterson, beating out myself and John Hyden last year for that third spot. The U.S. had three teams that qualified for the Olympics last year, the only country on the men's side to qualify three teams. Obviously, uh, there's a country quota, only two teams can go. But, um, I mean, that's, that's what you get when you play for the best beach volleyball country in the world. Brazil would respectfully argue that point with us, but Absolutely. I think we're still coming out in front. Yeah, it, if I'm saying it, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that we're the best. <laughs> but we have more medals, right? Gold medals. We do. We certainly have more gold medals. So, sorry about that. Here's a side switch. Fans are loving it. Close match here in the first men's semifinal. Again, this is the first event of the Gold Series on the AVP Tour, which is three events, New York City, Los Angeles, the legendary Manhattan Beach Open, and then lastly, the AVP Championships in Chicago, the three big markets with bigger money and bigger points, and uh, the players are definitely fired up about it. Fans should be too. Jake Gibb dealing with that offset. As we saw in the women's semifinals, I think a lot of this match is going to come down to who can set who the best. Which team can set each other in serve-receive and in transition. 
the best. Taylor, that nice there. dig by Taylor Crab. He's known for digging the hard driven ball well. And uh, there's proof right there because not many people can hit harder than Ricardo Santos. And uh, Taylor Crab, the bug as we called him growing up because he was so small. Uh, he's used to people smashing balls at him as his older brother Taylor did uh, throughout his childhood. And there he is proving my point. Came Schalk though with his uh, patented off-speed cut shot. It's like a cut hit. So hard to stop because he'll come at you with a really hard driven ball to the corner. It's kind of spatchy, uh, which is hard enough to dig in itself. And then he has that quick cut hit to get, get it down to the sand really quickly. Not to mention his ability to open up his shoulders down the line and just Yahtzee it down the line. Big block from Ricardo. Ricardo, not a huge jumper. He is a big fella at 6'7", 6'8", but does so much great stuff with his handwork. Yeah, it's Kind of stays vision. out of your line of vision, and all of a sudden he's somewhere you don't expect him to be. Definitely uses his size to his advantage. Jake Gibb takes that ball in the middle. Cam's all over it. Good long rallies here. Just some great plays on defense. Lots of transition balls. Ton of firepower from both sides, too. We're seeing defenders touching balls but having difficulty controlling those balls because they're coming with such pace. Right, so they're not able to get these good transition sets out of it, which is making for these long rallies. Both teams having to work hard for their side outs. Cardo off the net. Misses the shot. The big man with some of the best finesse game. But uh, missing that one just side, and obviously he's not happy about it. Something to watch here, especially in this heat. We saw Ricardo tiring as matches went along right. earlier in this tournament. As you mentioned, they played four extra matches on Thursday, being one of the lower seeds in the qualifier. Jake Gibb doing what he does best. You know, I have to say, Jake Gibbs, probably the, Jake and Casey Patterson over the last few years have been my biggest rival. Uh, we're obviously both competing for that Olympic spot, but coming out as a young guy, they were just all over me, making sure that I didn't feel like I could just come in and take over the tour, you know? They had that sense of pride, and I was always puffing my chest back at them and just having so many battles, like trying to earn their respect and, uh, um, I think it's safe to say that a guy like Jake Gibb, he just challenges me so much on the court, just mentally, physically. He's doing so many precise things as a blocker that I'm trying to learn from, but also trying to beat him at, at the same time. And uh, Jake's been one of those guys that has challenged me more than anything, more than any other player, I think, uh, playing against him. And I, I, I've stolen a few of his moves, I'm not gonna lie. The way that he can take away those low angles uh, by opening up his hands and, and his vision, his, his uh, it's actually helped my game. I, I, I definitely have stole a few uh, a few moves from him up at, there at the net, and he's one of the best in the world to do it. So can't blame me, right? That's a skill of his that has just continued to improve throughout the entirety of his career. And I don't know, it's strange to say that a blocker is undersized at 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, right. Uh, but on the world tour, at times, he's considered undersized, but he's certainly not a small blocker and that he takes away, like you said, a ton of space and uh, very tactically efficient and very solid with his handwork as well, like we talked about with Ricardo. Right, I'd say he's, I'd say he's an average sized blocker on the world tour at 6'7". Six, 6'7", seven. Six, seven, right? scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's scary. I think in the beginning of Jake's career, he was over, he was uh, on the higher side height wise. But the game, I mean, every sport right now, you just see the athletes are getting more freakish I'm 6'5 as a blocker, and I'm just like a short guy out there. Um, but uh, I, that's why I have to pick up these, these precise blocking skills from guys like Jake. Taylor Crabb showing that athleticism and speed. Able to transition, what a swing. So hard to bring that accuracy down the line. You don't want to error out of bounds, but Ricardo gave him a little sliver of line and he took it. That skill right there that we just saw is what makes, for me, Jake, one of the best players in the world, and that is his ability to set and transition. 
Go, go, go. I agree. Obviously, your job as a blocker is to block balls, of course, but also to set up your defense, set up your partner behind you. And when your partner is able to dig those balls, it's critical that you give him something hittable in order to turn that into a point for your team. And Jake, I don't think there's anybody better in the world at doing that than Jake Gibb. Like we're talking about, oh wow, Taylor. Just showing his natural volleyball skills. The guy's just got volleyball flowing through his veins. Since he was a little kid, I, I've watched him play. And uh, we used to beat up on him a lot, I'm not gonna lie, but, but look who's laughing now, because <laughs> everything we did to him as a kid, smashing balls at him when he couldn't even handle it over on the baby court at Outrigger Canoe Club in Hawaii. Uh, he's, uh, he can stand in there with the best of them in the world now. You guys took the what doesn't kill you is only going to make you stronger approach. With yeah, I think okay. we were just being jerks at the time. But, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's all worked out in his favor in the long run. It wasn't a concerted effort on your part to sharpen his sword. No, we were just punks. Okay. Well, it worked for both he and his brother. Yeah. As we'll see his brother in the other semifinal. Oh, what a serve. One of the other things that's great about Ricardo's game is he's got such variety. Again, like he's like we talked about with Summer Ross, for example, she's not going to do anything visually stunning necessarily. Ricardo, especially from the service line, isn't visually stunning with his jump serve or anything, but he can chop it up. He can give you eight or nine different looks, and you never know what to expect, which causes that hesitation and discomfort like we talked about. Exactly. So important. Right there, he actually chose to switch it up again. Maybe his toss was off, but he went with a jump serve toss and then tried to float it. Looks like it was his toss that was off. That's why he changed his arm swing up last second. Um, missed that. What a serve by Taylor Crab placing it right on the line. Ricardo coming through. After you almost that. feel like you got a point and a half for balls like that. Perfect serve from Taylor Crab. Ricardo nails it laying out to his left and sides out. So hard to get up after that and get a full jump, full power after that. That's just plain hustle right there. Taylor with the quick set. Gets on it quick. Good decision by him. He had no time to hesitate right there. He had to decide really quickly because Kane was on that shot, but it worked out because he didn't hesitate. Confident in his shot and got it down to the sand quick. We're seeing Jake and Taylor employ a little bit of tempo mm -hmm. to try and neutralize the effectiveness of Ricardo on his block right now, I think. Just came Schalk out of the middle. Good seam swing. That's actually a really, it's almost a scary hit on, I can't tell if it went through the block. Let's watch here. Jake's so good at taking those low seams usually. Yeah, it went through. That's a great swing actually. Because Jake will actually open his hands up really wide sometimes to take those low seams away. If you can notice and go through the, through the uprights, that's something you have to do to make him close his ball up and open up those low angles for yourself. Smart play by Kim and uh, Taylor with the easy side out on the next point. Kim is a sneaky jumper, too. Yeah, he's, he's like a 6'6 defender, and he flies. Taylor with the scoop. Just outside on the other side, but look how calm he is when teams are unloading on him. He's not flinching. He's, he can get a good contact on it almost every time. One of the best out here in terms of digging the hard driven ball, and uh, I believe he was the defender of the year on the AVP last year. Rightfully so. He does something that great beach defenders do, which is kind of use his body as almost part of his platform. Exactly. I, I like to call it, uh, it's obviously, ooh, Ricardo with the big block on Taylor Crab. You know some, a lot about this, being a libero indoors, a gold medalist from the Beijing Olympics, is Rich Lamborn here. I mean, is it safe to say that volleyball is basically reverse dodgeball? Yeah. <laughs> kind of, that's a, that's a good way to think about it. You're literally trying to get your body in front you're, of the ball. You're trying to get hit by it yeah. and uh, deflect it somewhere up in the air rather than dodge it. It took me a long time to learn that. I kept trying to catch the ball, and they said, no, it's reverse dodgeball. <laughs> You're out. Here we, we go. Talk, we talk a lot about the ball knows angles. 
It doesn't matter if it's your forearms, if it's your chest, if it's your abdomen, if it's your forehead. If it's your nose. If it's your nose. If you angle your nose skyward, the ball's going skyward. And Taylor, excellent at using all parts of his body to make digs. Taylor with the easy dig. Nice read there. Going high off the Brazilian block. Such a smart swing by the young guy. I wish I could say I taught him that, but uh, I don't think I did. I just love that he stayed aggressive in transition. No hesitation like we talked about. He came in hard and ready to feast high. Looking confident here on Sunday, the youngster. Name Chalk, another seam hit. That's, that's a specialty of his. Like I said earlier, he loves to bury that ball deep into the corner. Let's see. Let's see how it got past the block here. So Jake went and uh, to seam that, uh, seal that line off. It looked like he opened up a little too much. Usually he's really good at keeping his shoulders square. Opened up a little too much court for his defender. Ricardo going with Jake. There's a patented Jake Gibbs swing. Man, when I first got out here on tour, Jake was the most frustrating person in the world to block because he would just chip away at the top of my hands all day. Uh, I think I, I got a few more inches in my vert uh, since I got out here. So finally I was uh, getting up as high as Jake the next few years and I was able to battle with him. But oh my goodness, really Taylor Crab, gonna get an ace to end the first set. Jake Gibbs happy about it, already sitting down, sprinting straight to the bench. And when you're 41, 42, you gotta rest when you can. <laughs> the nice use of the elements there from Taylor Crab opting to go with the deep jump float serve. We'll see here. Look at that, a veteran serve from the rookie? Yeah, just or let not the rookie, wind work on it. The youngster. The youngster. I was the youngster now. Am I still a youngster? These, I mean, guys like Jake Gibber out there. And you're, middle, you're middle of the road now. Dang it. Lauren from, Lauren from Rybrook. Now it's time for Obrigado Trivia. Make sure you check out the Obrigado Lounge throughout the day. Lauren is going to try to take home a beautiful prize pack from Obrigado Coconut Water. And all you got to do, Lauren, is answer one trivia question. You think you can do that? I think so. Here we go for all the marbles. If she gets it right, she gets the prize. If she loses, she's out of here. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No pressure. You're good. Here is my trivia question. So, here in New York City, this is the first ever Gold Series event for the AVP. We've got three Gold Series events, New York City plus two. Which of these three cities is not a Gold Series event. We've got Hermosa Beach, we've got Manhattan Beach, and we've got Chicago, which is not a Gold Series event. Might be getting some help. What do we got? Hermosa! Lauren needs some help. Hermosa, Manhattan, or Chicago? Hermosa! She says Hermosa Beach is not. You are correct, Lauren, yes. Chicago, Manhattan Beach, and New York City are the three. Taking home an Obrigado prize pack. Give it up one more time for Lauren, everybody, and for yourselves. Thank you for the help. Nice job, Lauren. Yeah. The Gold Series, more points up for grabs. More money up for grabs. More prestige up for grabs. Brought to you by Obrigado this weekend. Thanks, Obrigado. Here we go, set number two. Big swing in the angle. Ricardo sneaking it by the block. 1 0. Good. And we're back as Taylor Crab hits that one out. 2-0 came Schalk and Ricardo Santos. Gibb and Crab took the first. Great first set. The lead changed a bunch of different times. Kind of a back and forth battle. And the ace serve from Taylor Crab finally sealed the deal for his squad. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit. I'm interested to see how that affects play as both of these teams can be tough from the service line. Oh. 
interesting to see here these these balls getting through the seam on Jake. I, I know he'll make some adjustments because he's done it on me a lot of times. It looks like he's pulling his, his uh, inside shoulder off the net a little bit. Kind of uncharacteristic for him, but maybe he's trying to get Taylor some digs early. We shall see. Taylor Crabb was on fire the first set. I thought he played so well. He's obviously used to the pressure, but getting to this final is going to be no easy feat, even after having won the first. Six feet tall, is that what we have him at? Six feet, yeah. Six one when he wakes up in the morning, maybe? Look at that vert, though. Yeah. It's ridiculously athletic. Fastest arm you're gonna see just about anywhere in the world. He gets up, that thing is loaded, and he's ready to uncork in a moment's notice. Look at that. His shoulders fully squared up to the line, and he crushes angle. And another ace from Taylor Crab. That's one of the things about new teams and certainly teams that don't necessarily speak the same language as fluently as they would like, maybe, uh -huh. is uh, communication is going to be an issue. Right. What do, what do you think about the Canadian-Portuguese combo down there? What, what is that sounding like, Rich? There's a lot of let's go Rickies out of Kane. <laughs> oh, barely getting over the block of Jake Gibb. Ricardo is kind of the si silent giant. You know what I mean? So I'm not entirely sure where his English is at. I know he lives in Florida most of the time now, so I'm sure it's getting better and better. Uh, and there's kind of a, an understood language of the sport that right. guys at this level understand, you know what I you mean? Pick your, you pick your few words that are important to learn and, uh, and you're all set. You can do a lot of hand gesturing, <laughs> right? some uh, well-timed grunting, and Ricardo sort of communicate. Ricardo speaks with, with body language, for sure. You can, you can always tell what kind of mood he's in, whether he's happy or mad by watching him play. Here we go, Ricardo Santos out of the middle. Ooh, and Game Shalk chucks the set a little bit. Our ref does not like it. No argument. I'm gonna have to agree with that. Well, came out a little sloppy. Came a pretty good hand setter. Here we go, Ricardo Santos. How does he come back with his patented line? Bounce. That guy has one of the best line crossbody hammers that I've ever seen. I, I was lucky enough to uh, be playing with John Hyden and, and John told me about it before the match. And first set when we came out, he went and did it. And I, I got the biggest block of my life on that one. Um, of course, he got a few more by me after that, but but Ricardo's crossbody, keep an eye out for that one because that's the one he's trying to trying to send up into the stands or here even bounce into the Hudson River like Sean Rosenthal did yesterday on match point. That's the gold standard for line swings, right? The Vegas line from Rosie. Yeah, Rosie has definitely set the bar on that one. Jake Gibb, there's that seam hand that he's so good at. See how he kept his shoulders square here? He got it with that inside hand. He set up his line hand on the ball and then spread his hands open and wide. Especially as that set drifts off. Still Kane. opened up a little bit, but he kept his right hand in there this time. Oh, Taylor Crab, you're a bad man. Look at that. Taylor, are you kidding me? Standing in there like he's on the baby court with Trevor Crab smashing balls at him on a 7 4 net. After a slow start, Gibb and Crab now up by two in this second set, looking to close it out in straight. Sets over the unlikely semifinalists, Ricardo Santos, Came Schalk. Go, go, unlikely Kane. if you believe uh, seedings. Yeah, right. Not unlikely if you know the fact that they're both Olympians and Ricardo's maybe one of the top five players of all time. We're seeing some passing difficulties from both sides. Makes me think the wind's picking up a little bit down on court. Yeah, I can see the flags moving for sure. It's usually picking up as we get later into the day here. Taylor with the tempo set blocked by Ricardo. Great hands by Ricardo. Keeping him pressed there. Watch as he keeps his hands over the net, even as his body turns. Keeps those shoulders square and hands over the net. So his strong with up. those hands and balanced. 
it's such a bang bang play, and as a blocker, you have to make you have to make the move first, right? If you see what they're doing and they do it, it's too late. By the time you saw it, you have to you have to read them before they make that swing and make your move first. You almost have to be offensive, even though you're on defense, you know, because you're having to make that move first. And uh, Ricardo's one of the best in the world at that. Thumping it. Came with that, came. He just has those great angles. Like I said earlier, he's hitting that deep one at you. Like Taylor was stayed stayed deep in that that hard um, deep corner shot that he likes, but he can hit a like a 80% cut hit. So hard to dig if you're not ready for it. Jake Gibb with a little push set here from Taylor. Oh wow, he saw Kane move. Kane made a move a little too early, I think. A little early on that. And that's the patent that Jake gave right down the middle. The thing that's so good about that is no matter what you're doing on defense, if you're doing anything other than standing in the middle of the court, chances are real good you're going to blow by that. Right. You're either running angle or running line, and he's just going to split the difference. Nice on two save from Kamer on that one off the top of Jake's hands. You know, this is, uh, although Taylor Crabb's one of the youngest guys out here, and the least experienced by far. At the same time, Taylor has been to the semifinals of nine straight AVPs that he's played in. New York, of course, is where we're at right now. We're going down the road map to Seattle next. Beautiful event on the lake out there. Then we go to San Francisco, an event I had to miss last year, but I am not missing this year. Hermosa Beach, the tour is back. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in California is excited about that one. And then the granddaddy of them all, Manhattan Beach Open. I was in the finals the last two years. And I lost both, and I'm pissed about it. Chicago, of course, the AVP Championships finishing out the Gold Series. There it is for you, the 2017 Roadmap. That was incredible foresight by the uh, road construction crew to build a road in the AVP letters. Gentlemen, back on the court, everybody. The Gamer, Ricardo, Jake. Right, Jake and Taylor with the one-point advantage coming out of the technical timeout. Jake and Taylor are actually playing together for the second time ever on the AVP Tour after placing third in Huntington Beach. This is their fifth tournament overall. They got a few tournaments under their belt overseas, but new matchups on both sides here, which says even more about how great these players are and how quickly they're gaining chemistry. I mean, this is the first tournament together for the Canadian and Brazilian. And then these two have played five together. Jake Gibb, of course, winning this tournament with Casey Patterson back in 2015, when you, Rich Lamborn, won this tournament as a coach with Emily Day and Jen Kessie in 2015. I like to take a tremendous amount of credit for that. He's claiming it all the time, all day. <laughs> you remember 2015 New York? <laughs> nice high swing from Kamer off the hands of Jake Gibb. I had that backwards, I think. That was Taylor off the top of Ricardo. Ah, uh, there you go. It's hard to tell, even though Ricardo has the best hand. Taylor's staying with the deep float. Jake Gibb. So good at those low angles, like I said. It's just how, cat important and mouse. It, how important is it as a blocker to make those big dives into either the line or the angle? Well, you have to, especially when you're playing against a guy who's so long and strong like Ricardo. And a lot of those Brazilians, to be honest, like a guy like me, even Jake's undersized, like we talked about earlier, you have to make huge moves, but still maintaining that penetration and getting over the net. And uh, it's hard, it takes a lot more effort, but necessary against uh, these freak athletes. Ricardo doing some something weird, showing his signs, I guess. Maybe that's a little sign language between the Canadian and Brazilian going on there. Taylor aggressive with the push set there. Kind of indoor style, right? Taylor a little bit Crabb, indoor. NCAA player of the year back in college from Long Beach State University. That, that was his pride and joy in college. Kind of just shows his versatility. 
Ricardo getting a little frustrated out here, complaining about that set to the up ref. Looked good from here. Got to be getting tired too, right? I think they're complaining about the camera, maybe, uh, showing signs, and then the other team is looking at the Jumbotron, maybe. It's no big deal. Game, nice seam swing again. You see him keep, he's keeping that as an option for himself. Keeps hitting that seam to keep Jake honest. You can't let Jake take away too many options for you. You have to make him stay honest and bring his hands together to take away that seam every once in a while so that Kane can open up those side angles for himself. As a player, would you even be paying attention to the Jumbotron? I don't pay attention to anything when I'm out there, but guys like you, who actually keep score and know what's <laughs> going on, um, maybe would notice that, right? Obviously, Jake Gibb actually, yesterday in a match, he, he thought he heard a fan um, giving calls to uh, the opposite team while uh, looking at what um, blocking calls Taylor was holding behind his back, so he had to go over and uh, let the fan know uh, that he didn't appreciate that, but um, Jake's obviously aware of a lot of what's going on outside. Short serve to Taylor Crab. Oh, wow. Cardo not happy. He got that transition that he wanted. Smart serve by him, I think, going short to Taylor Crab. Uh, what, what he's trying to do there by going short is take away Taylor's approach. He's in such a rhythm right now that if you keep serving him deep, he has that big, long indoor approach that he's feeling right now. It's going to be hard to stop him, but look at this. Taylor with another dig and trans. Little hesitation cut shot. Ain't no thing for the bug. Taylor Crab unloading. These boys are feeling it, and the crowd is stoked. It is unbelievable how quickly a guy his size can close to that ball. His footwork is unreal. 18 feet deep in the court, and it seems like in two steps, he's right on top of the net. It's just all instincts. This guy comes from a volleyball family. Obviously, his brother Trevor Krabs in the semifinals next. Would be unbelievable if those two could meet in the finals. Neither has ever won a tournament. They played together for the last three years. Taylor's first two or three years on tour uh, oh my God, it would be such a crazy battle to see those two at it, going at it. Chris and Paula Crab, their parents are here. They would get uh, the first victory guaranteed if they both made the finals. Uh, I'm sure it'd be really hard to watch for Paula. She's always stressing out watching her boys play. <laughs> Actually, uh, one of my mom's best friends from back home uh, is Paula Crab. So uh, our families grew up very close, obviously. Chris Crab, a great volleyball player and himself, kind of known around in Hawaii as, as one of the great players. He's getting older nowadays, but he's still one of the best players out there uh, playing at Nooners at Outrigger Canoe Club with all the guys back home. And uh, I mean, that's really where Taylor and, Taylor and uh, Trevor have gotten all their skills is, is from their, their father, Chris Crabb. Now, can we, can we talk about what was in the water in Hawaii about 27 years ago? <laughs> because between you, the Crab Brothers, we've got the McKibbins out here. Indoor, we've got Micah Christensen, the Shoji Brothers. I mean, all you guys are right around the same age in, in your mid-20s. I mean, that's a phenomenal pool of talent yeah, representing our country, both indoors and outdoors. Honestly, I'm kind of blown away by it because these are like my best friends growing up. A handful of guys you just mentioned are going to be standing at my wedding in a few months. And uh, I don't know how we all ended up being tall and, and uh, having a good physical abilities for volleyball, but the fact that we were just somehow all on that court, that baby court, when we were young at Auerger Canoe Club, just playing together, screwing around, uh, has turned into this, to be honest. And it's, it's pretty cool to see, and I don't know what the chances are, but, but we're all loving it, and we're cheering for each other when we're not playing against each other. Jake Gibb with another beautiful block. This is an interesting turn of events here. We remember a few points ago, Ricardo had that opportunity in transition that he missed and then kind of did his Brazilian Hulk Hogan impersonation as he tried to tear his tank top off. And right after that, they've given up three straight. That could be the turning point in the match. Taylor, nice. 
Yeah, it looks a little frustrated. Hands are on hips for both players. He's feeling it. I mean, after their last match yesterday, Ricardo fell on his back and was just laying there for a few minutes. And then he went to the sideline and laid there, dumped a whole bottle of water on his head as he laid on the right by the bench. I wish he would have done that about three points sooner as he took out my guys, Theo and Casey. But All right. They've played a phenomenal tournament thus far. Taylor and Jake, though, two points away from a ticket to the finals. Looks like the young guy's energy is just so hard to match. He's getting up so quick. Jake's setting him well, getting him in rhythm. Cam and Ricardo are making plays, but Jake is matching it at the net, and Taylor's just got that energy. Really nice look at Jake Gibbs' delay block technique on that. Yeah, that guy's got such good vision. There's always intention behind every move that he makes at the net. So it's really, uh, it's really impressive to watch. Chris Marlow in our booth giving us some insider some not only volleyball tips. tips, but broadcasting tips as well. Best in the game, in my opinion. Next to Kevin Barnett, of course. Taylor staying aggressive late in the match. Kind of shows you how much experience he has here. Chris Marlow would call that sizzling the pits, ladies and gentlemen. He sizzles the pits down the line and brings us to match point. This is exciting right here. <laughs> we might get the Crab versus Crab final if Taylor can get here and uh, his brother up next in the other semifinal. That's what I want to see. I'm not going to lie to you. Sizzling the pits was a uh, technique I had done at a Turkish barber here in town as they singed my hair. Taylor with the deep float came out of the middle. Taylor with another dig. That ball's in. Ricardo on two. Taylor with another dig. Can't get it past Taylor the bug. Crab. Oh, the third one does go down. Ironically, probably the easiest of the three, right? Right. He was unable to retrieve, but if that's the kind of effort it's going to take for Cam and Ricardo to side out, I expect the end of this match to come relatively quickly here for Gibb and Kraft. So the score is frozen here. You have to be serving to, to win the match. Old school scoring, side out scoring. Only on match point, you have side out scoring. AVP's owner, Donald Sun, implemented this rule because he uh, he wanted to see the sport get a little more entertaining. He hated those trickle aces on match point. No one wants to see a match end like that. Defense wins championships, so that's how you're going to have to win matches out here on the AVP Tour. It does create a lot of extra drama at the end of matches, and it makes it a ton of fun for the fans Jake once they understand going it. Going back. Touchy. Over the big block of Ricardo Santos. Here we go, another match point. Fans got the slow clap going. Let's see what the Olympian has in store. Oh, came. Set was a little off the net. Jake decided to drop, but came just such nice finesse shot down the line showing his versatility. We talked about it. You can do everything right and still not succeed sometimes out here. These guys are too good. That's a perfect shot from Kame. Yeah, a little you can't bit of be trouble. mad about that, that read by Jake. He took away the percentages, the, but Kame made a better shot. And look at Taylor Crabb staying on fire late in this match. He's not scared of this moment. He's been here before, and he wants to get to this final. Taylor's got that jumping ability like you have a little bit where he floats and it looks like he's standing on top of a box momentarily while he decides which shot he's going to hit. Yeah, he's just got that natural talent. It's, it's, ooh, Ricardo staying aggressive against Jake's one-handed block. That was going to be a highlight one way or the other. Right, exactly. That would have been an unbelievable uh, end to the match. Jake trying to go in with the one-armed Kong block. It's tough, though, when the hitter stays aggressive and you go up one-handed, that's odds are not in your favor. Jake said yesterday, you know, part of him was disappointed that Ricardo was out here because he liked to believe mentally that he was done dealing with somebody <laughs> of that talent. And that's the reason why right there. I mean, Ricardo showing a wide array of skills. Jake had to, has had to deal with Ricardo his entire career. Um, and uh, it ain't, doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. Not anytime soon. Just rejuvenated. And now he's out here on the American tour. He's, he's 
not not only is he not leaving the world or is he not leaving the sport, but he's coming to the American Tour for Jake Gibb. Oh, Jake. We set him up for that, I think. Jake, uh, we'll let that speak for itself. <laughs> Jake, say, hey, thanks for coming. Good tournament. But uh, I'm in the finals with my youngster looking for a title at the first Gold Series event here in New York. 